guys, welcome back to another episode of PHT TV. In purchasing speakers, there are many factors that are gonna come into play. You got room size, placement, power handling, physical speaker size, and so forth. If you're watching, you've likely been considering the RP6000s and wanna see what they look like coming out of the box. That said, you may also be considering the 8000s, wanna know what they look like coming out of the box as well. We wanna help in any way that we can, so today we'll be cracking open the 6000s and next week the 8000s. Following that, we wanna do a listening compare and see how they stack up. That said, if you have not already, please click that subscribe button and click the little bell next to it to enable notifications. Not only will this let you know as soon as new videos become available, but it will also be the first step to put you in the running for many of our giveaways and our contests that we have here on PHT TV. Speaking of which, if you have not seen last week's video, make sure that you check that out as well. We will be giving away a pair of the fives as soon as our subscriber account hits 3000, so that episode will tell you exactly how to enter the contest. Now, before we go any further, let's crack these guys open and see what's inside. As I mentioned in every video, you kind of want to hold your knife sideways and cut just along the crease. So, first off when unboxing, we do have our Klipsch Reference Premier User Manual. Now, flipping through this guy, you will see that it is not just for the RP6000s. It is actually for the entire series of Reference Premier speakers. Next in line, we have our warranty agreement. And finally, we have what essentially, it's called important safety instructions, but essentially it's how not to break your speakers. Read the instructions, keep these instructions, heed all warnings. Yeah, only use as instructions. Now, it does come with this piece of foam in between the grill and the speaker itself so that it does not da get damaged in shipping. Pull off the magnetic grill, pull that piece out of the way. Same on the other side here. And here we have the RP6000s. Now, this is the ebony finish, but please keep in mind that they are also available in walnut. The veneer is notable on these as they do use furniture grade veneer. With the options available, Clips makes it really easy to match with the rest of your home decor. Now, one of the biggest considerations when purchasing floor standing speakers and comparing them with each other tends to be the size and the can I fit this in my room aspect. So let's get that out of the way first. These are 39.62 inches tall, 9.35 inches wide, and 17.02 inches deep. For size comparison, the 8000s are 43.12 by 10.9 inches by 17.56 inches deep. Next we have appearance. In addition to the finishes, there are also notable updates since the last generation. The new gen features a new riser base, which sets it apart from the plinth on the previous generation. This tends to be a little bit more sturdy than the previous generation and a lot less susceptible to damage during shipping. In addition to that, we also have the new accents to make it more aesthetically pleasing and to fit in with your home decor a little bit better. All of that said about appearance, we also have some new things going on as far as technology goes and as far as drive components go. While the six and a half inch spun copper ceramic woofers are the same, there is a brand new one inch titanium vented tweeter, which is new to this generation of speaker. Some say that this is a gimmick and that it does not affect performance, but typically this is due to the lack of understanding on how the vented tweeter system actually works. In simple terms, the vent acts like a port. It expands the range of the tweeter, allowing you to drop the crossover point and lower intermodulation distortion between the two speaker components. The last item that I want to mention today, looking around back, is that it is a base reflex cabinet with a rear-firing Tractrix port. That is pretty much it for the specs, but we are not quite done yet. 
We want to dive a bit deeper on each component in this season, and as such, I'm actually going to pull these apart a bit, partly to show you how to remove and replace components should it ever be needed, but also to show you the side of these units that typically goes unseen. I also plan to leave the components out so that we can compare them with other models as we continue to unbox other units. So hang tight, I'm gonna go grab some tools and I'll be right back with you. All right, so while I do understand that this can be intimidating to some, it really is not that challenging. So if you ever have a warranty claim with Klipsch or need to swap out a component for any reason, it is very simple and while you can't see any of the screws or anything up front, they are very easily accessible. So let's start with the tweeter. So if you peel back just a little bit, this will just pop out. And there you have access to the encasing there. I'm gonna set that on top. All right, so once you've got that component removed, you were gonna take a number three hex key and take off all of these components here. Now you are welcome to use a drill, but I recommend being very careful as it's easy to scuff the sides or scuff the cabinet with a drill. After you have all the screws out, it'll want to come out on its own. You'll see there is a seal there. And finally, you have your speaker wires. Now, one thing you will notice about these is that there is a release on them. So you'll actually want to press that in before you pull. Now, if you actually need to take it apart further and take the horn off completely, that is gonna be a Phillips head screwdriver, which apparently I left downstairs. So hold on just another moment. I'll go grab that. All right, so if you do end up needing to take the horn off as well, four Phillips head screws. And there you have it. Now let's take a look at the woofer. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this table up here. All right, so that did look pretty easy, but one thing that concerns people more than anything is damaging the cabinet whilst removing these components. So this one you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more careful with. Basically, you gotta get this beauty ring off the edge here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find something very thin and also preferably plastic or something that won't damage the face of the unit. In a pinch, you can wrap something in electrical tape just to make sure that it is not going to damage the unit, but you can almost just get your finger under there and start prying around the edges and you'll be able to pull it off. Now, once you have decided what you're gonna use, you can kind of push a little piece of plastic, thin piece of plastic, and gently work it around the edge here. And once you have a little bit of it up, the rest will come out with ease. Now, in order to not break the beauty ring here, you want to work your way slowly around the edge. And as you can see on the back, it's held in by these little tabs here that go into the circular, circular holes. So when we're ready to put it back on, just put it in there and pop them back into those holes. Once that beauty ring's off, all we have left are the number three hex heads. You'll wanna make sure to keep a hand on it as you're unscrewing in case it decides it wants to fall out. Most of the time it has a pretty decent seal on it though. Since I'm removing both the woofer and the tweeter, I could reach in here and push this out like that. But if you were just replacing the woofer, You'd want to grab something in here. At this point, it just needs a little bit of motivation to be pulled off. So, again, being careful not to damage the, the box. If you pull out just a little bit, once you have it pulled out, you don't have a whole lot of room, but you take your pinchers, 
Again, if you can't get this with your fingers, a lot of times you could use like a needle nose plier or something. But basically what you're wanting to do is pinch the locking mechanism and then pull it free. And there is your six and a half inch copper spun ceramic woofer. All right, so that is pretty much it if you want to get a woofer or a tweeter out of the unit. Now, move the grill over to the side here. Finally, we have the input cup and network. This one faces backwards, so the screws are out in the open. Not quite as intimidating as the other components because you're not as worried about damaging the face of the unit. Four screws. With, again, with a number three hex wrench. Input comes out. It is a little bit tight. Now, there are a couple scenarios where you may need to remove this unit. So, say that you broke one of your, say that you broke one of your terminals or damaged one of your terminals and needed to replace that. As you can see on the inside of the unit here, we do have the terminal cup here, so you'd actually be able to remove one of those studs and replace it if so desired. If you needed to replace the network, you can actually pull the network off here, off of the input cup and replace the network by itself. With that said, that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and put the input cup back in. And finally, here you have all of your internal drive components. All right, that's about it for the 6000s. Next week, we're gonna be unboxing the 8000s and we plan to pull those guys apart as well. We'll place all the components side by side so you can see how they compare next to each other. After that, we're gonna put all the speakers back together and have a side-by-side -side comparison listening experience of the 6000s and 8000s. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you again next week for another all new episode of PHT TV.